At the beginning of Lion King, you have this epic shot of Zazu flying into Pride Rock. It establishes the setting of the movie. It's beautifully done. It's supposed to be impressive. And like many Disney animated movies, they try to start off with a really impressive shot to get you immersed in the world. But I want to tell you that this isn't even the most impressive shot at the beginning of The Lion King. The most impressive shot is this one. And the reason why this one is so impressive has to deal with Pixar because it is because of Pixar that they could do this shot. And the reason why Pixar is so important here is because they changed the economics of animated movies. Welcome to Market Power where we are creating a community of people interested in and excited about economics and you are in the middle of a series about how Pixar changed the economics of filmmaking. I've done other videos, I'm doing more, be sure to check those out, but let's dive right into The Lion King. One of the challenges with doing animated movies is that everything is in two dimensions. And I talked about this in my video about how Pixar helped create Belle because they used cells. This is cell animation for most of the animated movies and they're replicating this cell process when they bring in the computer coloring technology. And so you're dealing with two dimensions while you're making this movie and that can have some really complicated problems, especially in doing a shot like with Zazu. Let me show you the challenges that Two Dimensions creates by just showing you a little video that I took driving down the road. As you can see, as I'm driving down this road, I'm going at a nice leisurely pace. About how fast do you think I'm going down this road? Well, in reality, I am at going 40 miles per hour, and you can see this once you get the full vision of this video. You see how it feels like we're going much faster from this angle. What I did previously was just zoom in on a distant point, and the way that we process vision is that things that are far away look like they're approaching much slower than things that are really close. And so you can have this nice little optical illusion of looking like we're going much slower than we actually are just by zooming in on a part of this video. This is something called a parallax effect. That is, things that are much farther away look like they are moving at a different speed as things that are much closer. Another example of the parallax effect is the size of the moon as you move around. And this is actually the example that Walt Disney himself used to demonstrate the challenges of 2D animation. Imagine you have a picture of a road and at the end of that road you can see the moon in the sky. If you were to travel down that road in real life, the size of the moon would stay the same because even though you're getting further down this road, you're not getting that much closer to the moon. So the moon, the size of the moon does not change as you walk down this path. But if you were to take that two dimensional image and zoom in down this road as if you were walking down it, what you'll notice is that moon gets bigger and bigger and it feels like it's about to swallow the earth. And that's an effect that comes from the 2D animation. Everything's on the same plane. So as you zoom in on one object in that plane, you zoom in on all objects in that plane. And that creates a challenge for 2D animation. Walt Disney felt that to create the beautiful animated videos that he wanted, they needed to overcome this challenge. Walt Disney invented what is called the multi-plane camera. So instead of putting everything on the same plane, they took elements from the setting and they put them on different planes on different cells. And then they spread those different settings out. And then with this camera, they can move different planes at different speeds to create this parallax effect, to make it look like the moon stays in the same place the whole time while the rest of the setting moves at different speeds. This is a genius solution to this problem. I love the ingenuity that goes behind it. And this was such an important innovation that Walt Disney actually received a patent for this machine. Now, what's really interesting about this machine is that it has to be done vertically and it is massive. Like this thing took up so much space just to get these types of shots. But this solution has a big problem. 
It's incredibly expensive, and by expensive, I mean it takes a lot of labor to make this thing work. You have all of these different planes available to use, and so you have to keep track of the distance of each plane from the camera. You have to keep track of how much each plane needs to move horizontally or vertically, all these different movements you have to worry about. And then all of that goes into just one frame. How's that? Looks fine now. Okay, we've got that frame. Let's get set for the second exposure. All of this work just gets you a fraction of a second of footage. Let's imagine that we want to create a couple of seconds of multi-plane footage. And so we could say, you know, five seconds of multi-plane footage, that's going to take I don't know how many man hours that's going to take. Let's just, for a nice even number, let's say it takes 10 man hours. And that will take into account painting all of the planes and then all the work it takes to actually shoot that. So to get five seconds, it's going to take 10 hours. And then to go out and get 10 seconds, it'll be 20 hours. We'll just scale it up naturally like that. But that's going to give us a supply curve. And then we'll just draw a random demand curve. It'll look like this and we're gonna get a low quantity of seconds of multi-plane shots, right? We're, we're just not gonna have that much because it costs so much to do these kind of shots. This is where Pixar comes in. Pixar created the Computer Animation Production System, or CAPS, and this is what allowed animators to color the images on a computer and not just coloring the images they were allowed to do this multi-plane effect on the computer doing this on the computer drastically reduced the cost of doing a multi-plane shot so in the past where five seconds took 10 hours now five seconds takes let's say five hours and to get 10 seconds it only takes 10 hours we've lowered the cost of creating these shots which then shifts the supply curve out now, what happens when we shift the supply curve out? It's hitting the demand curve at a different point. We're gonna get a lot more seconds of multi-plane footage. One of my favorite books about Pixar is the Pixar Touch. And it has a lot of economics in it, which is unsurprising given that the author's name is David Price. I love that his name is Price. Anyway, he's writing about cats and he talks about the multi-plane camera and he says, the Little Mermaid had three multi-plane shots, all that its budget could accommodate. The Lion King, five years later, had hundreds. And you can see that in this Zazu shot. That Zazu shot is a multi-plane shot. You can see the different planes as he's flying through. And you can kind of see the things that are moving together on a single plane. And then you have subsequent planes after it, all zooming in as he flies through them. That's why this is an impressive shot because it's using this multi-plane effect. But again, when I say that this is not the most impressive starting shot here, this one is more impressive because it's a throwaway shot, and yet it's using this multi-plane effect. Before Caps, they never would have done a multi-plane shot for something so insignificant. You use these multi-plane shots for grand, cinematic, just beautiful, impressive, establishing shots. Something as simple as this would not have received the budget to do this. And yet, because it has become sh so cheap, because the supply curve has shifted out, now all of a sudden we're seeing them use it even in these tiny shots. And you see this throughout The Lion King. Pixar truly changed the economics of making animated movies. And if you're interested in seeing more about how Pixar changed the way that they color movies, go ahead and check that video out. And also check out the playlist that's coming out, as well as other videos here on Market Power, where we're creating a community of people interested in and excited about economics. So please subscribe to stay notified of when these videos come out. We'll see you there.